and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make some really easy holiday cards. So let's do it. Okay, so to start, I'm going to be going through my materials. Today we're going to be using affordable materials so you don't feel like you have to go out and spend a bunch of money on paints and paper. So today's paper that we're using is B watercolor paper. They actually come in these really handy pre-cut six by nine inch sizes, um, which if you fold in half are perfect for greeting cards, which we are making today. So I have my B watercolor paper, and then I'm gonna be using my Prang watercolor set, which is like an elementary grade <laughs> watercolor set. I have done a couple tutorials on like reviews on how to use them and all that stuff. Um, and they're very cheap, but they are pretty good. So we're gonna be using that today. I have my Princeton snap brushes with me. I have a size 10 and a size six. And then I might also be using this gold palette watercolor set I also have. It's Fine Tech watercolor. Um, I actually haven't seen them anymore, but there are many other gold palettes that look very similar to this that I think are just the same. This is not a necessity, but I may do like a couple like borders using this, but don't feel like you have to have this. So we're gonna get started. And the first thing you're gonna do is fold your paper in half so you know what you are working with. Now, I watched a video recently um, by Shada Campbell and she did a tutorial on really simple and easy um, greeting cards for different occasions. And while watching it, I have a lot of the same kind of tips um, that I use when I make my greeting cards. I've been doing greeting cards for ages. When I was a kid, you know, I couldn't afford to go out and buy greeting cards, so I always made my own. So watching her video, I recognize a lot of the same tips that I use too. So I will link her video below so you can watch hers too, because they're great for other um, holidays and stuff. But today we're going to be using these greeting cards for the Christmas holiday season. Okay, so I'm going to do three different um, little patterns that you can use and they're very simple. My idea of doing this to make them really nice and you know attractive looking are keep it simple and small. Uh, don't overwhelm it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do some mistletoe. Okay and we're just going to have it right in the middle. Now this palette comes with 16 colors but it doesn't mean you have to stick to just these 16. There are spots here that I like to use for mixing because I find these greens are a bit too vibrant. You know, this is an elementary grade watercolor palette. So the colors are very, very bright. You know, you think kind of like kids would love this palette, but I like to mute my colors a little bit. So I'm actually gonna start by mixing some colors that I want to use because I'm not a big fan of these greens. So I'm just gonna wet my brush and I'm gonna take this green which is a very, very bright green. It almost reminds me of the intense green or emerald, emerald green that I have in my Winsor & Newton colors. And I'm just gonna make a big puddle of this because I'm gonna be using a lot of green in this tutorial. So I'm gonna take my green and then to mute green, I like to add purple to make it darker. So I'm gonna take this purple right here. Actually, there's this is a purple too. So I'm gonna take that, I think it's a bit darker. And I'm just gonna add it and it makes this nice dark green. And I feel like that green is a bit more on the blue side. This one's a bit more on the yellow side. So I'm just gonna add this green too to make it more of like a hunter green, like that, okay? That's brightening it up. I'm just gonna darken it down. Yeah, that's a nice dark Christmas green, okay? So there's my green. Um. And I think we're just gonna start with that for now. And if I need to mix more colors, I'll do it as I go. Okay, so we're gonna do mistletoe. And mistletoe is actually gonna be hanging down, but we're gonna do it upside down. It's just easier to do the strokes um, this way and then turn it around later. So have the card the way you want it, turn it upside down. Ooh, there's watercolor here. <laughs> okay. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna wet your brush. I'm gonna be using my size six for this because we're doing smaller kind of leaf strokes. So I'm gonna take my green and I'm gonna do kind of like a stem and you're gonna want this thing in the middle. Um, if you are planning to write a message, maybe at the bottom, um, 
then I suggest maybe moving it a bit more towards the top of the card, but I'm just gonna be doing one right in the middle. So I'm gonna do a stem, and then I'm just gonna be doing kind of like these teardrop shape leaves off of it. Very simple. Don't overthink this whole thing and just have little leaves coming off of these stems. So the original card is gonna be going this way. But it's easier instead of pulling these leaves these strokes towards you it's easier to pull them away so that's why i put it upside down okay and you can just have just create some stems you can have some overlapping and just using the shape of that brush by you know, using the light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. So light pressure to get that thin line, heavy pressure to get the thick line, and then light pressure like that, okay? And now some people were also saying, some of the tr struggles they were having with that is that when they lift up their brush, all the color ends up in a little puddle right at the end. If that happens, just move, go back over it and move the, the color around. But it's also not like a, big issue like I think it's kind of a nice effect sometimes if you want it like that mm, I'm just gonna turn around see what it looks like could have a couple more coming this way maybe even from the top and you can also change greens too if you want or go with different values you can do some lighter some darker by just you know, adding more water or more paint and changing up the value. See like this one's really dark. I have some light ones over there. Changing up the value will make it more interesting to look at. Okay. Okay. Let's just see what it looks like. Okay. looks pretty decent. And I'm going to leave a little white space in between. Well, actually it's a really just little line there because we're going to create a little bow there after. Now I'm going to wash off my brush. And I'm going to take a little bit of brown here. And even this brown is a bit too bright for me. So I'm just going to dull it down with some black, just darken it up a bit. And that's a bit too dark. I don't want it dark brown lines. But I'm just going to do a couple really light with the tip of my brush. Little twigs coming off of these because there will little, be little berries coming off of those. Okay. Now, if you find it's bleeding too much into the green, that may mean that you have a lot of water and paint on your brush. So just take some off and add a bit more color if you need to. Okay, try not to have, when you're doing small little strokes like this, just try to make sure you don't have a lot of water or paint on your brush. That will kind of overpower the painting. You know, it can create a big blob. And if that happens, you can always just mop it up with your paintbrush or your paper towel. And now I'm watching the way some of these are drying and I see they're drying a bit unevenly in some places, like this part's really wet and then it's dry closer to the stem. So I'm just gonna move around that paint a bit like that. Okay, now I'm gonna take my red and because I used such, little, uh, such a little amount of water and paint for these brown little twigs, they should be dry already, okay? You don't want lots of water on them. Now I'm gonna take some red, not a lot because we're gonna be doing small berries. If you are worried about having too much water on your paintbrush, just test it out by tapping it on your paintbrush just to take off some of that excess water. Actually, that's a bright red. I'm gonna use this darker red there. And you're just gonna do some little berries coming off of those branches. You might not even see the little twigs after. That's okay. It just kind of gives you an idea of where you wanted to place them. Okay. There you go. And then for right here of that little area, we're just going to do a little bow. So I'm starting off with a small circle and then kind of a triangle coming off that way. Don't overthink it. It doesn't have to be 
detailed triangle coming off that way and then like that I might go in just add a bit more color like that okay and there you go there's your mistletoe and that is a really simple little card to do now what I usually like to do just to jazz up my cards a bit is add a freehand border using watercolors. So you could use um, maybe one of the colors that you used in the painting. Sometimes I like to add gold. So I'm just going to do a freehand border. And I always do it last with, while using watercolor because you don't want the border there and then painting. Oop, I just dropped water all over there. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> all good it happens I don't like to you do the border first because when I'm painting the middle I might get my hand in the border so I always leave the border to last so I'm just gonna pick a gold and to activate these it's the same way you just add a lot of water and you swish it around until you can see it, the paint start to kind of become liquid a bit on top okay and I do love these watercolors I don't know where I even got them. I may have got them off Amazon, but I find any of the palettes that kind of look similar to these are great. And I like to do a freehand border. It kind of gives character to it. So just firmly plant your hand. Give yourself some room, your hand, your, your arm on the table, and just move your arm across. Okay, not your hand, because that's when you can start getting all wiggly lines. Move your whole arm. And that helps you draw a straighter line. You don't want it too straight, okay? You want it kind of, you know, you want it to look like it's freehand. It gives it a little bit of character. But you just move your whole arm to get that line. Add a bit of water if you need to. And you can use a smaller brush or a bigger brush to make that line thicker or thinner, however you want it. And you can definitely do this with watercolor too, just maybe like the red or another shade of the green, whatever you want. Okay, and there you go. It's a simple, simple holiday card done in less than 10 minutes, okay? And there you go. So there's our first holiday card. Um, I'm going to do a second one. Just going to fold my paper to give you another idea. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to do kind of like um, a border. Not a wreath, but a border. And then in the end, if you'd like, you can write a nice holiday message inside like Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or whatever you want. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm just going to show you how to make the border, but we're going to make kind of like a wreath border. Does this make sense? Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to mix up my green again. I'm going to take this really, really bright green here. Okay. Try and pre-mix your colors. Just gives you a little bit of a head start. Taking that dark purple. That's a nice green. And then you know what? Mix another green. Okay. Let's let's get a couple greens going here. So that's really bright. I'm gonna use this green too. And I'm actually gonna turn it kind of into a sap green by mixing some orange. It just dulls it down a bit. Yeah, I just went into my orange with my green. It's all good. Okay, don't judge me. If that happens, just take your clean brush and wipe it away and then you have orange again, okay? And I might darken it up with just a bit of purple. There, now we have two um, shades of green. So I'm going to start with the darker one and I'm just gonna create some leaf shapes going around. So I'm just gonna create the stem, heavy pressure, light pressure all right light pressure heavy pressure like that and i don't really have a plan to be honest i'm just gonna kind of have them like that then i'm gonna space it out leave a space 
and I'm going to do another one. I'm going to have this darker green be some bigger leaves. They don't have to be in threes. Okay, you can do them however you like. Leave a space. Like that. Turn your card. Someone once said to me that they have trouble doing their leaves um, going the opposite way. And I just said, just, just turn your paper. And they said they, they didn't know if they could do that. They felt like it was cheating. There's no cheating with art. Do it however it works for you, okay? There's no right or wrong way to do this. You know, some people are right-handed, some people are left-handed. Do it however it works for you. Okay. That. Okay. So there we go. We have some going around in a circle. Now I'm gonna take my brighter green here. And mm, you know what? I think I want it a bit darker. I'm just gonna, just, there we go. Maybe a bit more purple. That's pretty dark, but it's a different shade, so we're good. Okay, and then I'm just gonna create some pine needles, okay? So using the tip of my brush, create that kind of stem, and then you're just gonna use the tip of your brush and really, really light pressure to do little kind of flicks out. And you can have another one going out this way. Again, if you have shaky hands, kind of like I do, plant your arm down and move your whole arm. Don't move your wrist. I find it's a lot harder when you move your wrist. Move your whole arm. Just see if that works for you. It might also be easier um, to not fold your card right at the beginning because as you see, you know, it is kind of up in the air <laughs> like that. So you can always just flatten it out. I just like to see where the fold is so I know what side I'm working on. You could always draw a line if you need to or whatever works for you. Okay, have another one going this way. I'm just kind of judged by the way you look at it. But I def definitely recommend you going out so you get those really thin lines right at the end. Instead of going towards the stem, go from the stem out, okay? Gotta make sure I'm in frame here. Now, if you wanted to add flowers into this border, you definitely can. I would do them first. Um, I'm not gonna actually add flowers to this one. I'm gonna add some berries after. I think they're just very simple and easy. But if you wanted to add flowers, definitely do that and place them first, I think. Like that. And now I'm just going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to create those stems. Okay. Where I'm going to want those berries. Like that. I'm going to get my red. I'm gonna mix it with this brown here. Actually, I'm gonna take a bit, because these reds are just so bright. I wanna mute them a bit. I'm gonna take a little bit, a little bit of green, and I'll just mute it just a bit. Okay. Mm, maybe this red. I'm just going to create berries. These ones are going to be a bit bigger. And I'm going to leave a little white, little white fleck in those berries as well. So it looks kind of like a highlight. Okay. Make 
add one over here. I like the way these bigger berries look. You could always do small berries too if you want. Add some over here. Like that. Okay. And there you go. Like honestly, simple, simple card. Again, under 10 minutes. And if you wanted to add, you know, you could even a little flex of gold in there too. Um, add a message, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, you know, wait till it completely dries first and then do it. But there is your second easy, easy watercolor card. And now we are going to do one more. I'm going to just fold it. Okay. And for the last one, we are going to do some pine cones with maybe some greenery underneath. This is pretty easy too. Okay, so I'm going to take this brown, and like I said, it's a pretty bright brown. Not really feeling it. It's a bit too, almost red. So to tone down red, I'm going to add a bit of green. Oh, that's a lot of green. And that's too green now. <laughs> Play around with your color. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to take a light wash of this brown. So I'm just, I had a lot on my brush. When I have a lot on my brush, yes, my water is really dirty. I could change it, but I'm not going to. Um, I just take some off in the water like that and then run it against the side to get a light wash in case you were wondering. Okay, so we're going to be doing pine cones. Um, my simple way that I like to do pine cones, I turn my brush upside down. So the point is at the bottom and I'm just going to use the shape of my brush. So it's like a upside down teardrop and I'm just going to do one at the top and then honestly just kind of and don't feel like it has to be a perfect teardrop like just get it on there and it's just going to go out thicker and thicker so there's one at the top then two and a little one maybe three that see they're not perfect shapes and just move your brush around so that thicker part is at the top and the point is towards the bottom okay don't worry about it too much. My motto is, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then while I'm going towards the bottom, I'm just actually using the shape or the point of my brush to just draw it out, okay? And make it a little uneven, okay? Don't worry about it being so perfect or whatever. Like, honestly, just like that, there's one. And then we're going to do a nice little little one up here. Boop. And I'm just going to... Like that. And now what I do to make these pine cones kind of come alive, because they look very flat and there's like all this white space in there, I'm going to add a bit of black to this brown to darken it up. And I just add a bit of shadow at the bottom of each of those little sections okay so there's still white space but I'm just adding shadow underneath each piece like that and it just kind of makes it look a bit more 3d but it's also very very simple okay now we are going to do some greenery and maybe some berries because we have a theme going on here and you can use both of your types of green. You could use one if you want, whatever. So maybe I'll do two different types of greenery. Maybe I'll do a pine and then some actual leaves. So I'm gonna do my stem for a pine. And again, remember, I'm gonna turn my cards easier. Flicking out. Like that. Another piece there. Okay. Maybe one over here. A 
like that. Maybe one more over here. Then I'm going to take this green and I'll do a stem and I'll just do some leaves. And it's okay if they touch some of the pine and they bleed into the, pli the pine. Okay. Might even have one coming up here. that. Okay. Then, mm, hold on. I want it to be a bit darker. Okay. Then I'm going to take my red again. Just mixing both reds. You know what? Maybe I'll add a bit of the brown in it. There we go. And I'm just going to do some berries. Again, those thicker berries with the little, I meant to do a little white thing, little white speck. Now remember, if your leaves are still wet, um, which some of mine are, they would bleed into that red if they touch. So just be aware of that, aware, aware of where you're placing them if you don't want them to bleed. There you go, like that. And I feel like I have a bit more space at the top, so maybe I would write a message there. Um, and I'm also, I think, these darker pines could use a bit more, um, they look a little flat. So I'm just gonna do another little round of needles, pine needles. There, okay? And I am going to take my gold again and take this gold. It's a bit more bronzy to go with the brown. And I don't know if you can actually see the paint starting to form, because if you just like dip it like this, it's not gonna do anything. You need to activate those gold palettes. Okay. And again, moving your whole arm. Like so. And you can definitely make these lines thinner if you wanted to. I'm just using my size six brush right now. I think next time I may make them a little thinner by using a smaller brush. There you go. And yeah, so I feel like I have a bit more space at the top, so maybe I'd write happy holidays or something, okay? But there you go. There are three very simple, easy holiday cards that you can do um, using fairly inexpensive materials. And if I do say so myself, oh, I think they look pretty good, okay? So if you have any questions, make sure to comment below, and I can't wait to see if you guys like them or not. So there you go, you have your three different holiday cards. Um, because they are quite open, you know, just put them in an envelope to flatten them, put them under some heavy books once they're all dry. Um, but yeah, there you go. There are your three holiday cards. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for more. Have a great day guys, bye. Mm -hmm.